I've always been drawn to hands. I think it's because it's the way that we touch people. I have this theory that if one person can go out of their way to show compassion, it could start a chain reaction. Sometimes I don't understand why having a walk with God is so hard for me. Why do you hang around those guys? They're bullies. Is that what you want to be known for? Later, Lamo. <laughs> I'm not like my friends. Are you spiritual or something? I just want to live my life for Jesus and care about people. Hey, can I help you? No. Come on, you must need something. I can take care of myself. I'm not so sure. What's up, four eyes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was gonna be different this year. Is this some kind of prank? I want to be a light, but it feels so dark. Life's gonna be hard sometimes, but he's there. Not as hard as that is to grasp. He's in control. Never gonna change what's happening in there. <laughs> it's just the way the world is. Well, I want to change the world. Compassion is the greatest form of love that humans have to offer. Test it out for yourself and see the difference that it can make in the lives around you. Tomorrow's not a promise. But it's a chance. You just might start a chain reaction. Jesus gave his life for me, and I'll give my life to him. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Maurice Brown Show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show an actress who is most known for her role as Rachel Joy Scott in the trailer you just witnessed, I'm Not Ashamed. She currently plays Ashley Baxter on the new MGM Roma Downey TV series, The Baxters, which is set to air at some point this year. And in 2018, she debuted her first album as a singer-songwriter called To the Dreamers. And you can also see her in the hit faith-based crime series, as you guys all know. My personal favorite, Vindication, on Amazon Prime, Redeem TV, and Pure Flix. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show the very talented Macy McLean. Hello, Macy. How are you? Hello. Really happy to be here. Macy, I'll tell you, that that film, I'm Not Ashamed, is that had to have been a very intense role for you to undertake. I, um, I, I, and I'm not a prophet, and I'm not going to you know, proclaim myself as one by any stretch of the imagination. However, during that time, I believe it was, I want to say it was 1998 or 1997, right in there somewhere. It might have been 99. Do you remember the year when, it, when Columbine occurred? I think it was yeah. 97. So I'm right in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right in there somewhere, the, the, the late 90s. But I, I was a Sunday school teacher uh, of uh, middle schoolers, and uh, I was talking about the issues that teenagers are dealing with as followers of Christ. And, and it was at a time when I felt like we were, we were seeing a shift in our nation uh, in regards to um, – just the element of a Christian nation and, and the difficulties that teenagers were having. And I, I told my class that I said, listen, guys, this was two weeks before Columbine. I said, listen, guys, you're dealing with a lot of issues socially. I understand and I get it, but you've got to stand up for what you believe in. And you don't have to shove the Bible down anyone's throat. It's all about how you conduct yourselves. Don't fall victim to you know, the, what do you call, I guess the intimidation and the peer pressure and all those different things. I said, what I think is going to happen is some kid is going to end up becoming so offended and so affected 
by the negativity, some kid is going to lose it one day and walk into school and start attacking people, more or less. I, I said something like that. And uh, sure enough, you know, a couple of weeks later, Columbine happened, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. And then it went on. A string of school shootings occurred after that. Several. It's cooled off quite a bit over the last two or three years. I haven't really heard anything. But for a while, it just kept happening. Um, I, I, I'm wondering, Macy, how was it for you from a spiritual perspective? Because it had to have been a huge challenge to undertake such a role. What was that like for you? Yeah, it definitely was a huge challenge. Um, <laughs> but I remember just I had to be so dependent, truly, upon the Lord to do this role. Uh, just because, I mean, in anything, definitely dependence on the Lord. And especially with, you know, playing Rachel. I didn't know Rachel. There was really no video evidence of her. There was no, there wasn't a lot for me to go off of um, with how to portray her. I did have all of her journals. Okay. Um, mom actually ended up giving me all of her journals and I would just dive into them every single night. And um, it was, it was definitely intimidating, but I knew the Lord had called me to it. And that's just one of my favorite just testaments of being able to play that role was I, I really shouldn't have played it really. I didn't have the resume to play a leading role in a film. And um, it was just uh, the audition process. You would, you have no idea. It lasted for like a year, a little bit longer than a year. And constant just knows and knows and knows and then the lord just carved out a path and made it so clear to me that it, i was supposed to do it um, okay but i had to i had to rely on him and and really just to give me what i needed to to do the role and the lord surrounded me with just the most incredible director amazing just team around me and um it was really neat because after the film came out um, the guy that plays Nate, um, his name is Mark in real life, and he's still alive. And he said when he watched it, he felt like he was watching a memory. He wasn't really watching a movie. He was like, it was yeah. so, you know, you had her voice, her laugh, and that was just so crazy. And I was just, you know, astounded by that. And that's something only God can do. I, you know, he created 100%, God. without a doubt. Yes. So it was just, yeah, it was, it was definitely the most rewarding, probably the most, one of the most rewarding things experiences of my life. God handpicked you to do that role. There's no question, you know, and, and after getting such a role, it kind of, uh, I, I think it, it just catapulted your young career and put you in position to just keep doing things. You have it. We're going to dive into how you got started a, a little bit later on, but it, it's amazing how God picked you out. And I, we were talking about vindication and we're going to get into that a little bit later too. But I was watching your episode that you're in, and that was one of my favorite episodes, episode two. And it kind of just grew on me just be because of the spirituality of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, vindication is a straight spiritual show but it, it just keeps things so edgy and real. It, it attracts viewers and it takes away that hokey, cheesy aspect. But mm -hmm. um, no, you've got it, Macy. I, I love the way that you portray uh, your character as one that's you know really trying their best to follow Christ. A lot of teenagers are, are struggling with that. But now I'm going to dive in, into that a little bit later. What I want to ask you now is what are you doing to supplement? Because this pandemic's got us all. Yeah. kind of crazy right now, especially as entertainers, you know, I'm right. a comedian and I can't do my stand up anymore. You know, I'm doing a few zoom shows here and there. Wow. Uh, this thing has just been really, really crazy. I mean, 2020s, but what have you been doing to supplement the inability to proceed as, as normal? You know, it's crazy. I haven't worked in the sense of what I'm normally doing. Normally I'm, I'm usually like in LA at least, you know, four months of the four to five months of working um, yeah. set and filming and acting and all this kind of stuff. All that was cut out. Um, but it's really cool. Before the pandemic stuff started, I remember at the beginning of the year, I always try to, I, I just love all that can happen in a year. Like I, at the end of the year, I love looking back and seeing like all that Lord's done. It just blows my mind. And at the beginning yeah. of 2020, I remember, I, and I wrote it down in my journal, I, I prayed to ask God that he would um, just give, and my husband, Caleb, just give us dreams really from heaven of just dreams that God wants us to do and to set us on that course, whatever that means, whatever it looks like. 
um, but give us ideas and creativity and um, whatever we're supposed to put our hands to. Give us that this year. And yes. what came out of that, <laughs> I hate when people say this, but I'm going to be the one that say, says it. I have been working nonstop on a couple of projects um, that I am so beyond excited about that never would have wow. happened if yeah. quarantine in their home. Yeah. Um, but it has to do more of um, on the creating side. Um, and that's a, that's a part of the entertainment world I haven't really dove into and I was able to um, when I wasn't acting. So um, I'm in a lot of meetings and works and stuff with that. And I can't, I'm, I've signed deals where I can't say anything. So <laughs> normally yeah. I would, but it's, it's been really cool to see what God has birthed out of something that had to kind of die for a little bit. Um, and that's what he does. He, he brings, you know, the unexpected and brings beauty out of what we think is just over. So. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I've heard a lot of other actors say the same thing. Uh, it seems like work is actually kind of increased and like you can do your auditions so much more efficiently and so much uh, e easier because it's on Zoom. You know, it's like you don't have to travel to do your auditions anymore. You can do like and, and you can do multiple auditions per day, you know, all over the all over the country. Heck, for that matter, all over the world. <laughs> so, you know, you, you got to love it. 2020 was crazy. One thing I learned about 2020, um, Macy, is that uh, Alexa has to find a job. <laughs> Yeah. Alexa's got to find a job. I mean, you can't just hang around my house all day and not talk to me and only talk to my kids. You, you know, you can't do that. You know, I, I told my daughter, I said, listen, you tell Alexa, I need the clothes taken to the cleaners on Tuesday, the lawn mowed on Saturday, and I need her to be flipping burgers on Monday. You know, or you got to get out of here. The robots, who knows? <laughs> Oh, no, Alexa's been nice to me ever since. I don't even have to make requests anymore. I walk in the room and she gives me suggestions, you know. Um, Marisa Luther Vandross. Yeah, 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 you got it. You, you, you got it, uh, Mace, uh, Alexa. I love it. But no, I, so, you know, we were talking about I'm not ashamed. Can you tell us exactly what the process was like? I mean, you know, God handpicked you, as you mentioned, but the the whole process of winning that role what did it take Whew. um a lot of auditions <laughs> yeah um training i when people tell me they want to be actors i'm like okay go get in an acting class like <laughs> go do that <laughs> um and that's what it took it took a lot of and i had been training for a long time but i i remember upping my game like really getting more and more serious and then okay. um uh, yeah, a lot of no's. It was a lot of rejection, actually. And that's a part that a lot of people don't realize that yeah. I've been sent in my tape a, a bunch of times. And I was always like, almost. Or they were like, yeah, but it wasn't me. And then, yeah, but it wasn't me. And um, But they kept asking me to keep sending, keep sending over the course of like mm, a year and a half or a year. Yeah. Um, and then at the very end, it was kind of funny. They actually ended up, well, not funny, but they ended up giving the role to someone else. And um, that person that kind of had decided like they weren't, they weren't an act, that person was not an actress. So she did not feel like she was supposed to do it. Okay. Um, but at the same time that she was kind of torn about that, one of the head producers just had a, I guess just a revelation. And he stopped all meetings and he said, we're done. I know Macy's the person for the role and I have no doubt. And so then they called me and they're like, you got the role. <laughs> that was, I wow. remember I was in the era and I just kind of fell over in my seat, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> wow. but, but, but yeah, it was a long, long process and a lot of work, but the Lord really throughout that process just taught me a lot of, I, I kept having to surrender it because I felt from the very beginning that it was mine to do. And then, but the Lord was just like, all right, give it to me. And he had to just break me down to, complete dependency. Like I said, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. That gave it to me. Like I didn't just win the role. It was really by him. So yes. Yeah. It, yes. It sounds like you, you really had to extend yourself. Do you remember Susan Willis? Uh, she played your mom and if you're gone. Oh, yes, I do. How are you? Of course. I remember you. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, Macy, it's, 
it's it's. Re- I was in the movie Love Different in 2016. Okay, it was the first time I'd ever done a a, a major film. I'd done a lot of theatrical stuff at church, and you know, being a stand up comic, I have a lot of stage experience. But still, I'd never been in a feature film, and here I am uh, across from Jen Gotson Chandler. Have you ever met Jen Gotson? I don't think so. She's a faith-based actress, and she's been, a matter of fact, she was in an uh, Oscar-nominated film back in the early 2000s, uh, uh, Frost Nixon. But she's been on a lot of stuff. So anyway, I'm across from her, and then the, the comedian actor Tommy Ford, who's on the show, t- uh, the TV show Martin from the 90s. And I know you don't remember that. You were too young. <laughs> but it, it, <laughs> it was the Martin Lawrence show. So anyway, I'm like, oh, man. So and I was in the critical part of the film where, where there's a lot of uh, verbiage and emotion and so forth. And I'm playing the role of the bad guy. And it was. Oh, my gosh, we, we probably did this particular scene 14 times oh because they wanted different angles. It wasn't because the actors were messing up. It was just like they wanted to try here, try there. We'd have had one or two slip ups. But, but long story short. I did not know how difficult it could be uh, as an actor because I'm like, yo, I want to get this thing done and and go, okay, nail this. I didn't know I would have to do it so many times. Oh, yeah. You know, and nail it so many times. So acting is no joke. Yeah. It's serious business. Focus. Especially if you're an emotional scene and, 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 and there are tears involved and so forth, you know. One thing, and I got to ask you this, because I'm I'm sure you've been. Matter of fact, in Vindication, you know, you had to shed a tear in one of the scenes. I remember, um, in the scene I was in, it there was crying involved, and so what the it was a faith based film. You're not going to get what I'm about to tell you in a secular film, but the actors before we went into the scene, they prayed them. Get this, Macy. They prayed themselves up to the. Oh, wow. Motion that needed for, for teary's, the teary eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I watched them in awe as they prepared for the scene. It was, it was Anthony Hackett and Jen Gutson. Wow. And I had never, I had never seen anything like that. You know, I, and I, I'm not the type of person that can cry on cue anyway, although I did have to get emotional, but thank goodness I didn't have to cry. But how do you prepare for a scene like that? I, whew. Like I said, it takes a lot of focus because you have to do so many takes. And I mean, I always think anytime you're filming any, anything, what you do, like what you yeah. lay on the field is going to be there forever. Yes. <laughs> so you don't really have time to, like, I, I remember right before I did, I, I'm not ashamed. I had an incredible actress that I just look up to so much, email me some advice and about being a lead in a film. And she was okay. like, oh, you're going to want to at times like cut up with everyone else and like people are going to be telling jokes. You're going to want to get in on it and like have fun because everyone's having so much fun. She's like, but you have a job to do. And if you right. don't do your job, you don't give it the service it's supposed to. Like you're going to want to get out of the scene and hop in and out. And some actors can do that. I, when I'm in a scene, I'm, I'm there. I'm kind of in a bubble. Right. <laughs> Especially, especially emotional scenes. The fun ones, I, I like to. It helps, me, <laughs> or whatever. But the emotional ones, I mean, I have to tell people. I have to tell the makeup team. I'm like, I promise, I'm okay. But like, I might be crying while you're doing my makeup in the chair because I'm getting in it, kind of. Thing. Yeah, yeah, you're getting there, right? I'm getting it, and you know, the the director Brian Baugh of I'm Not Ashamed. He was like I said, he's incredible. Like I, it's my dream to work with him again one day. Yeah. And and we've become great friends. And he would just always, I you know, you think the crying scenes are monsters in your head. You're like, okay, this is a big scene. Like I gotta nail it. I gotta cry. Yeah. And he would always just be like, it's not a big deal. Like it's another day. Whatever. Let's see what happens. He always just de-escalated it. And so yeah, I it love it. I love it to like go explore and like see where I could go. But I didn't, he never put any pressure or anything like that. So um, yeah, but staying in the zone is key for me. You'll see me on set with headphones in before a scene like that. Yeah. And just, you would, you would think somebody died, honestly. Like I have directors I haven't worked with before have come up to me and they're like, are you okay? Like, are you going to be okay? And I was like, I am totally fine. I'm in a bubble, but I will come out of this bubble as soon as the scene's done. (laughs) 
Yes. So that's, yes, that's uh, awesome. I, I, well, that's, you know, de-escalating the, the pressure before doing a scene is great coaching advice. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and it's the same thing, you know, when you're doing comedy, it's like, look, this is, this is just a bunch of jokes and you're going up there to have a good time. Just go let it rip. Don't, don't overthink it. Just do your yeah. thing. Um, and so I, I, but when I watched Jen and, uh, Anthony do that and, and, and see, you don't get that kind of stuff in a secular film. You know what I mean? You, you don't, you don't have like, we're all a band of brothers. We have to band together. We're all in this, you know, you go into a secular, uh, uh, set and I've, I've never done a secular film. I'm, I'm just imagining based on what other actors who are faith-based, the experiences that they've had you know, on secular sets. Right. So when everybody's banning together, that's, there's, there's just nothing like that. So Susan Willis says, Vindication is a great show. Loved seeing you and Ben Davies in your different episodes. Yes, I love Ben. You, you and Remember. Ben were in I'm Not Ashamed together, correct? Yes. He played Nate. Okay. Uh, ben, Ben was uh, in episode one of yes. Vindication. Mm -hmm. and, and Susan, you're, you, that was a great, you know, uh, segue into my next question for Macy in regards to the film or the crime series Vindication. It's a Christian project. You can see it on Pure Flix, ladies and gentlemen. If you've never seen it, I highly advise you to get a subscription to Pure Flix now if you don't and go straight to Vindication. In my opinion, there's nothing like this particular show in Christendom in that. It gives you a real life feel for issues we all deal with. And they don't they don't pull punches at all. I think they get right up to the, in my opinion, to the line of inappropriateness, but they don't get there. To me, they never get there. There's the world crosses those lines all the time. And you don't have to. You know, we get it. We're all adults here. We we know what goes in the space here. No. About to <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? We we get that part. So um that and that's what you know vindication does. I, I think they do a great, I think Jared O'Flaherty does an awesome job at actually navigating through the minefield of what's okay and what's not. Uh and and I, I just love the show. I, I wanted to know from you, and we were talking about this a little bit before we went on about this, the struggles of teens and in your scene you know, teenagers struggling with some, some issues of staying true to her faith. Um, how much does this actually resemble the struggles of Christian teens in real life, uh, Macy, in our society? Um, I, I mean, I think it definitely does. I, vindication as a whole or episode two? Well, episode two. Yeah, I think... Oh my gosh, it's definitely relevant. I think it's especially, I mean, with phones nowadays, it's yeah. it's so easy. Like it's just access to things is so easy. And something I encourage, um, I guess, this generation to do yeah. is yeah. call things out really quickly before it gets to another level. And yes. I think like the key to not getting to that level of um, going down, I guess, you know, the path that my character goes down. Right. Is Stopping it immediately. I mean, especially like with phones, what you see, if you see something, if you, you know, pause and watch something or you're wanting to, you know, ask your boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, to send something like stop it before it goes anywhere. <laughs> um, right. Exactly. You know, yes. And, and even thoughts you have, whatever it is of just living in that quick confession to the Lord. And that's just a beautiful place to live. And it will prevent you from doing things you never thought you'd do. And going places and, yeah, getting to the point that my character got to. It's definitely relevant, I think, to this whole generation. It is. And I, I just I just love the way that it's handled. It's a, it's an issue that, it, listen, it's touchy. It's one of those deals where, you know, I think a lot of Christians are afraid to talk about openly or get into, particularly in in the, in the format of a of a TV show or a film or what have you. Uh, but it, I I love the fact that you guys tackled it. And and as I was saying before, I love the role that you played. It was just a spiritual uh, episode. It, it was it was so spiritual to me. 
And it, and it looked like, and I'm not going to give anything away, but I do want to say it looked like it, you know, your character had, even in the ups and downs of your character, still was an effective witness for the boyfriend. Yeah. It was still an effective witness. Right. And right. that is what I love because you were going, and I, it's hard not to give away to him. <laughs> I, 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 I just loved it. I could go on and on and on just about that one episode. I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I love the entire show. I mean, every episode is like almost gives me like a wow at the end, but episode five and two, I mean, I just, you know, just verbally just shouted out like, Oh my gosh, that was awesome. That was awesome. I mean, I ain't, I'm not I'm not lying to you, Macy. I ain't gonna lie. It was awesome. Episode two really was, and I and I was telling you <laughs> before we came on because I probably, all right, full disclosure, I've probably watched Vindication like 15 times, <laughs> and yeah. so when I'm watching, when I'm watching like uh, episode two, it 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 kind of grew on me. You know yeah. what I mean? It was like. It, it kind of grew because what what it does it it gives you the idea that this is um, an issue that you know a couple of teens are going through. Like I'm 56, so I'm looking at it. So, well, this you know this is something you know that teens are. I have you know young adult children and a you know a late teenager. So I mean I like I can relate. And but as it as I continue to watch it, I saw the spirituality in it. I I, I saw the power of the spirituality of that episode. Yeah. And it, it just, it just nailed me. Mm -hmm. it, it just nailed me. And so, uh, and I, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop because I don't want to give <laughs> too, yeah. it too much more information for those, but I hope I have whetted your appetite for you viewers that are, are watching this. Go watch it. If, if you've never seen vindication, go watch it. You know, you can watch it on Redeem TV if you don't have Pure Flix or Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. um, and matter of fact, you can watch it on Redeem TV for free. So please check it out. It's, it's one, one of those things. Susan Willis says, I love it as well. It doesn't cross the lines and it lets the audience finish the sentence on their own. That, see, that's really the key right there. It's like we are all adults. We, But Hollywood, Macy, as you well know, they love to blur the lines. <laughs> they love it, you know, and and, and, uh, and it's all about entertainment and 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 dollars and yeah. and people get into the eye candy stuff and so forth. But it's not needed. And and if you could get people to look at the meat of the issue, the core of the problem. See, secular viewers who look at a Christian program, and let's be one hundred here, Macy. Most Christian films and projects. Make the secular viewer go, ah, that's cheesy. Uh, that's that's hokey. Ah, uh, that's that's too perfect. I, I I think the in general, but you don't get that uh, at all with vindication. Right. It is it is distinctly different. Now, Candace Kirkpatrick says one of my favorite episodes as a mom of three teens. Extremely well done, and it is well done. It is well. I'm sorry, Macy. I I went on and on and on. I I kind of went into a, a vindication. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I just went a little nuts. Anyway, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I I really I really love. Well, I would love to get your opinion of of vindication and the effect it has on secular viewers. You know, I, I mean, I think I think it addresses something that you really wouldn't see anywhere else. Like I don't, you wouldn't see on Netflix or, you know, or you wouldn't see, um, I don't know, on a cable show, like you wouldn't see this issue talked about really. Right. Um, and, I, and I think it's something that isn't talked about and it's just kind of glossed over as, Oh, that's not a big deal. And it is a big deal. Yes. Uh, the character goes through. And I, I think, I think, I mean, really, I think it's so, I think vindication Jared did such an awesome job of it being so real and not hokey and cheesy that I think yeah. it would hit anyone that watches it of, oh my gosh, like I did that and I felt that shame. Like, what do, what does that mean? And oh my gosh, wow, she forgave him. Or yeah. like, you know, like how did she recover from that? Like, 
I mean, I think anyone watching, I don't think vindication is just made for a Christian audience. I think it's, I think it would reach anyone really. It would. And awesome job of that for sure. And it should be quite frankly and honestly, Macy, it should be for everybody. You know, we, we get into this zone <laughs> where, you know, the four walls of the church thing, you yeah. know, and, and we're, we're having a hunky dory kumbaya time and that's all good. <laughs> yeah. That's all good. Right. However, what's the great commission? We're, yeah. we, we're, we're supposed to be out there yeah. mm -hmm. in a lost and dying world, being a light for Christ. And so that means I can tell you as a comedian, I'll, I'll, I'll go anywhere and do comedy. I, I, I'll go to a lot of places. I'm the only clean guy on, on the stage, you know, and they're, they're just having a, a rip doing what they do, but they take notice of like, well, wow, I mean, you know, Maurice has got no problem being here with us. You know, he's doing his thing. He's kind of like in the middle of this stuff with us, but I'm never, you know, abandoning what I stand for. Yes. You know, and that's what you have to be willing to do. And vindication is an example of that. And I, just to piggyback on what you said about, you know, it's not just for a Christian audience. It, it's for everybody. Yeah. Yep. And, and as well, it should be for everybody. That's part of the Great Commission. And I think that's what vindication is doing. They're working on season two right now. And oh, I'm so excited about it. They, they've got five episodes uh, done and they're halfway through. So I, I can't wait. And, and uh, for the the second season, I know you are doing a whole so many different things right now. I know you're working on a show um, right now called The Baxters. Can you give us a little background on that? So it's based off of Karen Kingsbury's uh, series, The Baxters. And okay. funny, I used to read Karen Kingsbury all the time. I mean, I still do, but I mean, like, I, that's when I, I started in high school. Okay. And, um, the series that it's based on, I it's called The Baxters, and I read in high school, and I would get so attached to these characters. I mean, I would, I, d I would accidentally pray for them, like I was so attached, and then I was like, oh my gosh, they're not real, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and then it's so cool. Years later, I, um, you know, years and years, I mean, ten years later, I'm. I, see, I hear that they're making a show about based on the series. And I called my manager and I was like, I have to audition for this. You don't understand like <laughs> the series. And he was yeah. like, okay. and so I ended up auditioning and getting the role of my favorite character. Wow. Um, awesome. awesome. Which was so, I just felt it like it was just so kind of God just to, the timing of the series being made. And I was in LA when they were casting it and yeah. it, all lined up and it's been just one of my favorite projects ever and um i'm i just i can't wait for the world to see it but yeah That's now you you say the baxters has got more of a a similar feel to to vindication in the fact that it's more gritty it's more real life type stuff that most people deal with very much so yeah yeah um, the roller coaster of everything you can imagine. So, <laughs> well, let me, let me, with that question, let me ask you this. Do you think shows like that, uh, can, can maybe, cause you don't see a lot of it, Macy. And that's why I'm going to ask you what I'm about to ask you. You just, you really don't, which is one of the reasons why I'm struck with uh, vindication. But do you think this can point the way to a more effective way in producing faith based content? I do. Um, and I think, I, I mean, you look at what the Irwin brothers have done. You look yeah. at I Can't Believe. You look at I Can Only Imagine, and what you know. So many filmmakers are doing right now, and the bar has been raised of the level of excellence. You know, Vindication is in that realm of just like you watch it, and you're not like, ugh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, it, absolutely, it, it, absolutely, it's yes, done very well. And um, I, I mean, I think that's the new. You can't go back from that kind of a thing. So. It only, increase, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? It's only going to increase and, and we should be doing excellent things. And, um, you know, the most creativity. I mean, guys, I just always think, you know, God's the creator, but he also created us to create. Like that is the coolest thing ever to me um, that we yeah. have that ability because we're made in his image. So, yeah, I, I definitely think that there's just going to be more of that. I, th I, I truly do. One of the things I noticed in doing my research on you, Macy, is that you are a, a, a 
you, you are, in my opinion, based on what I've seen anyway, and, and the research is you are an authentic follower of Christ and you, you bring that to the screen in, in whatever you do. And, and, and I, and I love it, you know, because that's what we're called to do. How does more specifically your, your faith influence you as a performer? I mean, it influences everything. Um, I mean, I just always think at the end of the day, it's like I was created to glorify God and yeah. whether that is, on a secular show or whatever scripts I get anytime. I just okay. always think, you know, at the end of the day, can I stand before the Lord one day and, and, you know, and say, you know, I glorified you with this and it be glorifying to God, whatever I would do or whatever I did. Um, and that's just always my hope and my prayer. Just, you know, God, if this is what you want me to do too, if this is the avenue you want me to glorify you in, um, then he's going to move mountains for me to do whatever he's called me to. And that's something I always find comfort in because in acting, you're told no most of the time. And it is just, I mean, a dog eat dog world out there. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it is. Los Angeles, it's, it's, I mean, it is, it's insane, but it's just been so cool looking back on my career. I can confidently say that the Lord has just totally made a way for everything he's called me to do. And so I kind of look at it as in like, okay, this is my assignment now, whatever mm -hmm. I get. And I'm like, okay, God, whether it's, you know, how to glorify you through this role or on the set, whoever I'm talking to, um, whatever conversations come up in those realms, whatever it is. Um, yeah. I just always pray that he's glorified and gives me discernment and wisdom in all that whole process. Now, Macy, how did you come to salvation in Christ? What led you there? I was seven years old. Okay. Revival service. And I remember I was at the revival service and the Lord just got a hold of my heart and it all just clicked. Like I just, I remember wow. telling my dad, um, like I just understood it all. I was listening to the pastor and um, I just told him I wanted, to, I wanted to ask Jesus into my heart. And he took me outside and, and I did. And he walked me through. My dad's a pastor too. And he walked me through oh, it. Awesome. And, um, I mean, it's so funny. My parents say, I mean, I remember as a child, I was just very bent on doing wrong, like all the time. I was a really terrible child. <laughs> like, and my parents say, my dad still says to this day, he's like, I have never seen a seven year old go from night and day, like just a totally <laughs> different person. Wow. That's she's come to your life. And it was just so funny that the Lord, I'm so thankful he got a hold of me at such an early age because yeah. I think I was really headed just to do my own <laughs> way, and, but yeah, seven years old. There, there's something about you know the word of God hitting a, a child, if because it, it it's I don't I don't know that it happens that often. I have a comedian friend by the name of Brian Trimble. I don't know if you've ever heard of Brian, but his dad is also a pastor. And he said, I never had a chance to dip my hand in other cookie jars. So yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I've been a believer since I was a little kid, but you know, you don't, you, you, you don't really hear a lot of kids being affected, but I tell you right now, when it does happen, it, 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 it's legit, legit, yeah. you know, it doesn't yeah. go away. I mean, when, when, when a, when a child's heart is touched by God, it, it's, that's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much a wrap. Um, I want to ask you something that I asked Jared I'd love to get your response. I asked him, I said, so uh, faith-based programming right now is you got it. You got a lot of uh, secular viewers that still have this idea about uh, Christian films. But I'd like to ask you, because you mentioned a film that, that by the Erwin brothers, uh, I still believe, which is really well done. The Kendrick brothers uh, did uh, Overcomer, really well done, and all the both those guys they they did great stuff anyway. But do you think that Christian films are starting to attract more secular viewers? I do, um, okay. definitely do. Um, I think that's because the the level of excellence that it's become. Um, I think if you put content in, in front of people that, that it strikes a chord in their heart like if they watch the trailer and they're like oh like that i mean because you know god's put eternity in the hearts of men like everyone has 
that yes. soul, you know, that longing for something more. And I think when you, in a film way, when you combine that, um, something heartfelt and genuine and authentic and real um, that has to do with what the Lord's done with excellence. I mean, I think it's, I think it definitely it, attracts people because um, they're curious and it's like, huh, I wonder what that's about. Or maybe it strikes a chord with them. And I, I definitely think it, it will reach more. And it, it is for sure. I, I definitely think there's this intrigue that the secular world has with faith-based films. Like they're not all in yet, but they're starting to kind of become interested. And when, when the work's well done, like, um, I still believe, you know, that's probably, it probably put seven, $8 million in that film. It looks like it's a hundred million dollars. I mean, the Irwin brothers did that well in putting it together. You know, me and my middle son. Yeah. Yes. It, we were watching it and we were like, Hey man, this, <laughs> this film is absolutely amazing. I mean, the cinematography and, and it's such a powerful film, the, the, uh, you know, about Jeremy camp's experience. Yeah. Um, awesome. So, but with that being said, now you're getting vindication type projects. You're getting the Baxters. I can't wait to see the Baxters, the Baxters type projects where now it's becoming a little bit more meaty. It's becoming a little bit more substantive and, and, and hard hitting. And, and now it's kind of hitting the, the neighborhood of where a lot of people are living. Yeah. Which, you know, you don't typically get. And so I, 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 I'm with you. Um, I think we're going to a better place. I think that we're faith-based films are starting now to make a move that's going to attract, uh, attract a lot of secular viewers. Again, great commission. Hey, that's what Christ called us to do. And we're just becoming more refined at what we do and, yeah. and making ourselves more appealing and, and attractive. Um, Back to acting and the craft itself, uh, Macy, what is it about acting that has actually made you, over the years, your experiences, you've done this, you've done that, you have, you didn't make this audition, and you made that, and you had to go through all these different things to get to this uh, role or what have you. After all of those things, what is it about that experience that has actually made you a better actress? Um, I think... Out of the whole man, there's so many things really. I could say. <laughs> yeah. But I think it makes you also not not look so much at yourself. Like it, you know, you can be so caught up in did I do that perfectly? And was I this and I this? Right. You know, why didn't I get that part? And it's you come to a point where you're just, you're just kind of like, yes, of course I care about the roles I auditioned for. But the less you focus on yourself, the better work you do and the better auditions you do. And yes. truly, one of my favorite things about acting is it really is so selfless. Like you have to give so much. <laughs> yeah. the, more, the less you're focused on me and the more you're focused on, okay, I want to give all that I can to this. And you know what? Whatever happens, happens kind of a thing. Yeah. Then you have much more freeing and it's so much more enjoyable and it's fun. And the work that comes out of that is just, it's its totally different than just being me, me, me. And I didn't do this and I'm doing this. And it's all about me on set. You know, like that's just, there is no life in that. Like that is, that's not the way to do it. So I, um, yeah, yeah. I'd say that's one of the things that I, I, love. I love it. I totally agree with that. And I can, you know, I can definitely say as a comic, it's very similar. It's very, very similar. You, you have to be willing to really it's it's a, a, a spiritual thing. You have to be willing to die to self. Yeah, you do. You, know, you, you have to be willing to do that. You know, I, I remember when I started out, one of my best friends, he said, hey, listen, that's not you up there. You, you're too scripted. You're trying to be uh, something that you're not. You're being robotic now. He said, that's not the guy that cracks me up all the time, right? <laughs> and I had to digest that because, I don't know, you just have to get the audience out of your mind. You got to get everything out of your mind, and you just got to let it rip. Yeah. And uh, I got to that point eventually. But, I, you know, it took my my best friend 
to tell me that because he thinks I'm hilarious. So he he's like, man, I, I want to see you, man. I mean, and 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 you have to die to self. You just got to get out of your way. I've gotten to the point now, Macy. I mean, ten seconds before I get on stage because you, you have some people. It's like they're in a zone. It's like you can't get within six feet of them, right? Right. Before right. they go on stage, it's like, yo, yeah, you can you can. <laughs> You can see the zone before you even get over. It's like, I got to stay away from him, right? Yeah. Everybody's got their own style. Right. But I'm like you. I've gotten to the point when I get to the venue, I don't want to see my notes. I don't want to go over a joke again. Uh, I'm like, if I don't know it now, I ain't never going to know it. So I do, and your homework is so important. <laughs> no more homework. It's showtime, right? Yeah. So I just go ahead and enjoy the evening, talk chit chat and everything. And then before I get up there, I'm like 10 seconds before I grab the microphone. I go, how am I going to remember this? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, well, here we go. <laughs> you know, and, and then you just go, ah, whatever. You just grab the mic and you let it rip because, Macy, the practice, the mm -hmm. time, the effort, all of the writing that you did in preparation for this moment, you, you, paid, you paid the price. Yes. You did it. You work for this moment. So just you, you work for this moment, right? And you know what? Every time it comes out exactly the way that I yeah. wanted it to come out because I put the time in already. Yes. You have to and trust. It just comes out. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so I, I like what you said there. I mean, you just got to be able to just, hey, look, block every. And then I found the same thing in acting is, is, is very similar. Yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, it was a little bit easier for me as far as that goes, because, you know, it's not live. You can do it again. Right. Yeah. You can be like, I need another take. So, but you just but you don't you know, of course, you don't want to do that. Let, <laughs> let me. <laughs> <laughs> so as a Christian actress, Macy, how do you determine the kind of role that you're going to play? Um, I always want to be able to, like, see myself doing it like if I can't picture if I can't get into it or yeah. picture myself playing the role then I just feel disconnected from it yeah. um, those are always the hardest auditions um, but I push myself to do those because I'm like okay well I mean you know sometimes you just gotta suck it up and <laughs> try <laughs> so those are the hardest yeah. connected to it yeah um, but yeah I I mean, I always like to find what is the common ground I have with this character and can do I relate to it? And can I, even if I don't personally have had the experiences or anything, because that's very rare, then um, can I empathize and, you know, sympathize with this person and step into their shoes in a good way to tell their story and do it justice? So that's yes. what I think through. Now, are there any, as, as a Christian actress, are there, because... I also think like there are certain roles sometimes and you, you it, it, it's like it, it goes from person to person. Everyone's got their own opinion of how they're going to do a role or uh, right. what kind of character they're going to do or what kind of film even. I mean, are you open to doing a, a secular film or portraying a character in a secular film that might be like, wow, OK, hmm, am I crossing the line? Um. Um, I'm definitely okay with being in not faith-based films. Yeah. Um, and I have like, especially early on in my career, did like guest roles and TV shows and, but still the roles I did, I still felt good doing. Like I still yeah. felt good yeah. by God and, and you know, nothing was crossed or anything. Good. Um, good. Yeah. But no, I always, um, I always, you know, go through that okay like you know wherever this character goes or you know what this character's doing you know i i don't that's not glorifying i can't do that like yeah I, I can't. yeah um, I, I, I totally get it where i've had to um you know just say like hey this wasn't this wasn't in the audition when i booked a role they added a lot of things when i got yes. that and it was not told to me and these were like really really big moral things <laughs> like <laughs> right small like this was like a really yes. big thing. and I had to say like hey like the, I did not know that this was on the table and should have been talked about kind of yeah. thing and just said yeah. like this, 100 percent do it yeah um, you just have to you'll you have to have those set up before you go into it yeah um, before okay. you do the audition or before you go into acting you just really have to know so, and some things are gray, I know, but 
the the big things of okay, you know, I, I won't do this and and really just be bold. You have to be bold and 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 remember that God is the one that controls your career anyways. <laughs> and he's go. gonna first for you that you couldn't open by yourself, but but being, you know, glorify him and trust him. So, it's all like I did you. A hundred percent. I, I I totally agree with you. It's it's all a case by case basis. I won an audition not too long ago. Is it, it, it the, the the darn thing can be dicey? I won uh, a role and a respectable role. Um, I'm doing a speech at a banquet. You know, mayor mayoral type deal. Okay, it's all good. But what happened was we got the script, and my wife and I we went straight to my parts. We didn't read the script. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's go and find your part right so um i go to the table read macy and i'm hearing things well there were two scenes okay in the film that were practically pornographic and i'm i'm like mortified by what i'm hearing i'm like oh my gosh what have I done? And I, I had to sign to be a part of the film. So I, I'm like, what in the world is going on right now? How did I get here? <laughs> and so God. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Read in the whole script. Not, <laughs> what, what's that, Macy? Especially if you don't get the whole script sometimes. Yeah. Like you do yeah. it all and you don't know. With, yeah. You know, it's like, okay, well. And and God stopped the project, it, it, you know. It just and it got, God literally, you know, took me by the nape of my neck and pulled me out of there. And, and went, but it, it's you know, and I and I and I say that to to say this as far as okay, what kind of role are you gonna take? And for any you know young aspiring actors out there, you know, there are so many things you have to determine before you take a role. I mean, not all roles are are necessarily bad, even though it may not be a faith-based film. It may be, you know, a relatable issue that everybody deals with. They're just not talking about Christ. However, in the way that you perform can make a lot of difference in who sees it. Yeah. And, um, and also read the script. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no to self read the script. <laughs> the ones, um, you know, some, like you said, case by case, some yeah. people don't feel convicted about certain things, but, and, you know, certain things to me are black and white. And then there's certain areas where it's like, okay, I wouldn't do that, but okay, you know, I feel personally convicted. Yeah. Like, kind of thing where I'm like, if I ever have a check or just like, you know, feel the Holy Spirit saying, Hey, this is not, not it. Then I'm just yeah. like, okay. Exactly. Just like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's where it comes. You get that check in your spirit. Yeah. So, uh, fly rock Midi, The only person that's seen vindication more than Maurice is Marty McClain. <laughs> <laughs> loves vindication. <laughs> is that right? He's a big fan. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love, love it. Now, is that your dad or your, your husband? That's your dad. Yeah. 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 Um, wow. That's really cool. That's really cool. Um, yeah, it, it, but you know, but seriously, yeah, that's what it comes down to though. It's that check in your spirit. God will let you know. Yeah. And, and even when you, you know, don't, you know, check all the boxes, sometimes God will just rescue you and, <laughs> you know, you, it, it's all good. You know, he will not allow you to have to go through something because you never intended to right. be a misrepresentation. Sometimes you just miss things that, you know, was right there in front of you and you just, you didn't pay attention and that can happen. Yeah. And when you're constantly having to, to discern, like if you're getting, you know, seven auditions a week or something, you're constantly like going through and you can get tired. Like you can get tired of reading the whole scripts of everything. Yeah. You really, and I think also it's important just having people around you that, um, can, you know, if, if I'm ever like questioning something, I'll, you know, I might go to my mom or I might go to, well, I'll definitely go to my husband and be like, what do you think about this? Or like, how would, would this misrepresent, you know, like having those conversations with people that, you know, are, you know, love the Lord so much and will tell you the truth kind of. Thing. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's what you need. You need someone that's going to tell you the honest truth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's the only way you're going to, now, before we get out of here, this has been a great conversation, by the way, Macy. Oh, 
Congrats. Thanks for being on the show. Um, you, you're also a singer and you have a debut album that you released, I think in 2018 to the dreamers. Tell us a little bit about that album and how fans can get a copy. Yeah. So I've, music has always been a part of my life. And I mean, I was doing music, writing music before I was acting and okay. um, in high school, I would just, you know, go in my room, write and write and write. And then I've just always written. Um, I have my guitar, I play guitar and in 20, I guess, 17 or 18, I just was like, you know, I'm just going to put out an EP. Like I, I don't want to look back and not wow. have what I, you know, a dream that I really feel like I, I'm passionate about and okay. so I got to the dreamers. And it's not a, um, I wouldn't say it's a faith album at all, like a Christian album. It's not a Christian album, yeah. um, but I don't separate that. You know what I mean? Like to me, right. it's like I, I write about my life and almost like a journal opening, yeah. but yeah. what the Lord has done and who, you know, just his presence with me. Like, I just feel like that's in everything. And I mean, there's a verse that says like to the righteous, all things are righteous. And it's just like, you know, God, here's what I've written. I want it to glorify you. Like even if whatever it is. And that's kind of um, my heart when I put out the album of, um, it was just something I loved to do. I was passionate about. And um, the songs, I, I didn't know what would happen with them. But uh, the show, The Baxters, actually, um, my music has been able to intertwine with okay. The Baxters. So that oh, was wow, nice. cool. So um, people will get to see that when it comes out. But um, And then I'm continuing to write now and um, definitely plans with music. Inter I, I, I think I always see my music intertwining with acting. And there's a lot of plans for that in the future that I'm very excited about. But To the Dreamers is on all music platforms. And I would love if you guys checked it out. Soul Touch of the Poet says, I'll have to check out Vindication. Soul Touch of the Poet, you got to get it, man. Yeah. You got to check it out. I mean, there's no question about it. Um, that's a, a friend of mine. He does poetry like, at open mics. He's a, he's a, he's a very good uh, poet. Um, and, and, and Candace is admonishing you poet. You won't be disappointed. You got to see it. You got to see vindication and let's see. And the, also Candace Kirkpatrick says, that's wonderful that the music is being used in the Baxters and how, again, can fans get a copy of, of to the dreamers to the dreamers. Um, it's on Spotify, Apple music, YouTube, anywhere you listen to music, it should be there. Um, well, it is there. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Usually, I mean, Spotify is my preferred choice of where I listen to music. But yeah, it's, it's called To the Dreamers, and it's an EP with about six songs. And yeah, check it out. And as we and you, you've kind of touched on it already, but I'll ask one one more time anyway, just in case you want to expound on it. What advice can you leave with young actors and actresses uh, out there that are are thinking about making or starting? a career in, in this industry? I would say get training. Definitely. Cause sometimes okay. you can see the end goal or you can see the red carpets or the big movies and you can just want to jump to that, but be prepared for the long haul and okay. know that if the Lord has truly called you to this, that he will make a way and that you do not have to sell out. You do not, um, compromise you you do exactly as he's called you to do and live in obedience and he will open doors that no man can shut truly um I'm, he's done that my entire career and i would say i mean truly if god cares about your heart more than he cares about any role you ever do and the whole process of acting and he's just always taught me it's all about prep where, where's your heart kind of thing and you yeah he'll, he'll do what you can but um, also, I, you know, something I'm learning now that's kind of hit me in a new way is co-laboring with God. I think that's such a cool concept Concept of we get to work with him. So join hands with him in anything you do. And whether that's acting or singing or whatever it is, um, give him the glory. And and yeah, I, th I think it'll it'll be a it'll be a good ride. Lots of highs and lows, but he'll be the constant. Yeah. <laughs> Spoken like a true follower of Christ. I love it. I love it, Macy. 
And, you know, when I'm, uh, I'm going to say this last thing about Vindication when I was watching it, what really, again, it, it's like, uh, if you're watching that show, if you're watching that series, the, the direction that the show is going in, it, it, it sneaks up on you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it slowly, subtly, beautifully sneaks up on you and you go, oh, yeah, that's where they're going. They're going to the light. There's no question. And then so then you're, you're you're like fully invested into the show and, and you're ready to take this ride. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, you're ready to take this ride. It's like, yeah, yeah, I want to I want to ride. I want to go. Yeah. And even though you may not necessarily before it started would even dream of taking such a ride. <laughs> yeah. You see what I mean? Now you're in. Invested. And so it's just beautiful the way that, you know, Jared sets that up. Yes. And so your your episode without, and please type something, Jared, if I'm going too far. <laughs> but Macy, I, I, I think uh, your episode, it, it kind of like says, yeah, we're getting ready to take this ride. Yeah. Your, your, your episode, and, and, and it was like, because you still don't know when you're watching it. You know, you kind of like, this is a good show. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this is a good show. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, but that's kind of all you're thinking. You're kind of getting an idea, you know, and it may be faith-based, but uh, whatever. This is a good show. But uh, not, yeah. 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 And then, and then your episode, again, says, yeah, we're getting ready to take this ride. Yeah. We're on our way. So <laughs> I loved it. I, I just I, I just loved it. Like I said, it took me, it took me a number of times to really get that vibe, you know, and, and it just great to see you again, Macy, wishing many blessings to you in your future work. That's Susan Willis. Thank you, Susan. And then Candace says Jared is extremely gifted. He definitely is. Thankful for him. Great interview, Macy and Maurice. Lots of wisdom. Candace, thank you so much. By the way, Candace is in uh, season two, and I don't, I don't know what Candace's character is, but she's like going to be uh, heavy, uh, heavily visible in in season two. Thanks again, uh, Candace, for watching. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know that that's what it does, and uh, so you you do a great job. I've got to see. I have not seen. I'm not ashamed yet, but I got to see it. Um, I guess, you know what, I, I'll, I'll say this, and uh, I'm going a little bit over time, but I got to say this. You know, when, it, when that film came out, it was 2016, correct? Um, yes. yes. And so, and, and, and you know, you have to like wait a certain amount of time for it to kind of get out of the nation's uh, system. Uh, and, and they waited, they waited a good while uh, to do it. Um, but when it came out, I was like, oh, man. I don't know. I guess it, it it affected me so much what happened what, on that particular day. Um, yeah. But it had to be done. And the story of Rachel Joy Scott has to be told. Yeah. It has to be told. Well, that's uh, the, it's, it's not a Columbine. Re like, it's not all about the shooting. Yeah. Columbine. It truly is a, t a testament to Rachel. Like, it's it's her life. Her yes. dreams. Um. And I think that's something, you know, people might have thought like, oh, it's about like they made a movie about Columbine. It's like, no, that's in it. But it's it's about Rachel. Exactly. And, and you know, so as I watched that, and I guess I had to do more research and I, the trailer definitely reveals that this is more of a, a, um, a life thing. You yeah. know, how that she's walking through her life. This is about Rachel Joy Scott. It's not about the young men uh, doing what they did per se. Although what they did is a consequence of what teenagers are experiencing ad infinitum in 2020, and that's peer pressure. Mm. You know, the, the peer pressure is at a level like I mean, like I said, I'm 56. When I was coming through school, peer pressure was there, of course, but it was dealt with in different ways. Now you got social media. I mean, you can read about yourself and all these different media platforms, the bullying, I mean. Yeah. You know, it's it's a different level of yeah. pressure that, you know, we didn't experience back then. And and I and I think that it's affecting 
a lot of young people in, in a big time way. So, but again, it wasn't about those young men as much. It was about the life of Rachel Joy Scott and I want to see it. And I think you, you did a tremendous job. I've heard nothing but good things about I'm not ashamed. Ladies and gentlemen, please check it out. If you've never seen uh, this film uh, with Macy McLean, which focuses on the Columbine incident in 19, I believe it was 1997 came out in 2016. That can be seen on Amazon prime. Is that correct? Macy? Mm -hmm. Amazon Prime, iTunes, um, it's in Walmart, Target. Um, probably easiest though with Amazon. <laughs> and before we get out of here, Macy, how can fans follow you on social media or by website? Um, I am on Instagram and Facebook. It's at Macy McLean, M A S E Y M C L A I N. Okay. And, um, uh, my website is MacyMcLeanOfficial.com. So yeah. Awesome stuff. Macy, thank you so much for being on the show. I think you are a tremendous young actress and a great example of Jesus Christ and what he wants us to do in this industry. Please keep doing what you're doing and may the peace of Christ be with you and your family. Oh, thank you so much, Maurice. This was great.